I'm Tupei. And welcome to Let's Learn C++. Today's topic is dynamic arrays. This is when you hallucinate in multiple dimensions and remember things as beams of light wrapped around the fifth dimension. If you're completely lost, know that I didn't know where this joke was going when I wrote it. <laughs> All right, in the previous tutorial, we covered how to dynamically allocate memory for individual variables. Many tutorials before that, we covered how to create arrays and multidimensional arrays. We will now cover how to create dynamic arrays the old fashioned way, meaning professionals rarely use the method I'm about to show you. It's kind of why I've waited so long to show you it. All right, to create a dynamic array, create a pointer as you normally would, and then have it set to a new instance of the data type you desire, followed by square brackets for the size of the array. Note that previously we would use parentheses to enclose a singular instance value, but for an array, we use square brackets to designate the size of the array. The size must be declared when the array is created and cannot be changed, just like regular arrays. So let's look at an example of this. All right, so up top we have our standard setup code of importing the IO stream, uh, the string, and using namespace standard because I'm lazy. Then up top for lines seven through nine, we have previously used ways of instantiating arrays um, that are non-dynamic, that are just regular arrays. And we have A being created with empty square brackets and then squiggly brackets to enclose the values that we want it to be defaulted to. So one, two, and three. Then we have a creation of a B array that just has a size of four. And after that, if we wanted to like initialize all the values of that array to be zero, we could just include some open and closed curly braces right there and it would be done. All right, and then we have a simple output there to show that our B array is not actually initializing the values and will have will in fact have some garbage value defaulted in. After that, we have our dynamic memory array example. So first we have pointer one, which is just P1, and it's being set to a new instance of an int array of size five. And this will work just fine. If we wanted to initialize the values to zero, we could simply open and close regular parentheses with no values inside and it'll default to zero. Now we have pointer two set equal to uh, an empty set of square braces. So the array size is not being declared. And instead what we're trying to pass in is curly braces enclosed with one, two, and three. This will cause an error. This will not actually work. I wanted to show you this because up above, we use it to create a regular array, but it will not work for dynamic arrays. So if we go ahead and set a breakpoint here and try to run our code, it will not actually work and cause build errors. Okay, so we can just go ahead and delete the curly brace code here and add in some value if we wanted it to work and then run it. And now it'll start to work just fine. So if we continue on through, we notice that our first value being output B0 has a garbage value inside of it. And then we have P1 being set to a value of four right here. And then we have it being output as well as a random garbage value for P2 being output as well. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out. Now, something to note is that after you instantiate any dynamic memory, it is important, super, super important that you clean up that memory afterwards. So basically, anytime you use this new keyword somewhere later in the program, you should have a delete open and close square brackets for the deletion of a dynamic array. If it's just a regular new value, then you don't need those square braces. But because we're working with arrays, this makes sense. And all we're doing is cleaning up the memory. Perfect. And then finally, we just have our get line to stop the program before it closes. All right, so a question you may be asking yourself at this point is, what if I want a variable the user inputs to determine the size of an array? Well, this is a very particular issue, and I have an example for just that. So up top, we have the creation of a user input int variable, and then we're just gonna pass in using uh, enter a number as the prompt, and then the value entered afterwards is gonna be stored in user input. Then we try to create an array, a simple normal array using the user input. Now notice I get a compiler error right here at user input, this little red squiggly line, mouse over it, and it says expression must have a constant value. Now you may, may be thinking to yourself, well, we could just use a const as we did before. So we can convert this user input to a const int right here, and that should work as well, right? So let's go ahead and copy in the value, 
And now if we mouse over that, no, it still is not satisfied. That is because regular arrays size must be determined at compile time. It cannot be determined at runtime like we were asking it. Runtime being when the user inputs the value and the program is running. So this expression does not work at all. However, what we could do instead is use dynamic memory to solve this problem. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those top two lines. And now look at what we have here. We have a pointer P being set to a new int array whose size is determined by the user input. And then after that, we're just gonna go ahead and loop through all the values of that array and set them to a value of four. Why a four? I don't know. <laughs> and then after that, we just output a line saying ending and finally use our get line here. Now something weird is going to happen here. Watch what happens. When I run the program, I'm gonna input a value of five right here. Enter and it says ending and the program closes out. Now ordinarily, what would happen is our string y and then get line would actually stop the program from closing out. So what's going on? Why is it closing out now instead of stopping? Well, because we have a call to see in somewhere else in the program, it's now not properly handling the get line function as it did before. So instead what we could do is we'll just replace this get line with just a regular cn with a variable y and it'll work just as before. Now we can enter in a value of five as before and then it'll say ending and the prompt will not close and instead we can just press enter again or we have to actually enter a value in <laughs> and then it'll close out. So one of the weird quirks of cn is that you actually have to put in some value for it to be satisfied. You can't just press the entry key. All right, so that's it for part one of dynamic arrays. In the next tutorial, I will cover how to incorporate dynamic arrays into functions and creating multi-dimensional arrays. All right, you are doing fantastic keeping up. I'd highly recommend challenging your skills at hackerrank.com. Please support me on Patreon if this helped you. And thank you to my Patreon supporters, Marcus G, JK. And as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive. Mm -hmm.